Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today I'm extra happy because we're doing a train build. Whoop whoop! <coughs> yes, today I am joined by the rather stern looking railroad Jim, who is uh, in the costume that comes with the uh, recent crocodile locomotive that I got on a brick haul, just needed to buy the cap and the torso, the rest is my own. Uh, yeah, but he's going to be helping me build today's uh, cargo wagon, uh, and that is just to add to my ridiculously long cargo train, which is already about half of the length of my entire train loop, which is <laughs> funny if you ask me, it sort of uh, splits opinion every time I do one, but nonetheless, today we're going to be making it even longer. Uh, but before we do that, I'm just going to push these guys back because we're going to do a few amendments uh, due to uh, comments received on the last one. Very many thanks for those. Uh, yeah, we did the uh, fairground carnival game of the hooker duck. Uh, and there's a few things that people suggested, which I think are good improvements. The first one was to add some real sized goldfish hanging from the roof here, which I quite like. It's kind of like get your goldfish here. Uh, and I think it's a good bit of decor because I didn't want to hang the real life bags from the roof, which I kind of could do a bit because I think they might um, get lost a little. Uh, and I've only got a few of them because of the price of them. So these ones are going to go into people's hands. And I thought that uh, uh, Kev here could be presenting the other two. So having uh, basically uh, another goldfish kind of build, if you will, uh, hanging from the roof, I thought was quite a good idea. And I've just attached those with uh, a red and then white one by one stud uh, with one of the grabbers coming out so they're from my undersea collection of pieces uh, but I do like that idea so let me know what you think of that uh, and then there were too many blues really we had dark azure uh, medium azure dark blue and what was ordinary blue there uh, so I've just changed that one to an azure and I think that reduces the number of blues and makes the two ponds uh, the same color and so on so I think that was a really good one so thanks for that uh, and then I've actually added a few plant pieces as well to the pond, which was another suggestion uh, from a subscriber. So thanks very much for that. Here's your bedoying. Great. Uh, and then even the small build couldn't escape uh, some uh, suggestions from you. So one was to add the Series 17 Circus Strongman to this build, just because he'd either be showing off using it or be the one running it. So I think that's a really good idea. I kind of had him uh, hooked out to you somewhere, but this is obviously the right place. Uh, and then somebody else suggested I had a few yellow lights breaking up the green, uh, orange, red. Uh, and I like that as well. It adds even more colour. So I've done an irregular number of each just to make it uh, a little bit more interesting. So, yeah, thanks for that. Right, so that is last time out of the way. Uh, let's get on to today's build. Now, one of the many benefits of uh, running a Lego channel is I get to kind of live out a lot of my long-held Lego dreams in a way. Uh, and one of my long-term dreams was to have a copy of quite a very rare set. Uh, and that's the Diesel Shunter Locomotive, set 7760 from 1980. Uh, and this is just a very small kind of 12-volt uh, train which is a shunter, which is the kind of little train that kind of pushes carriages around about uh, a train yard. And I thought that is just a wonderful set. It just looks so uh, exactly like real life and kind of really cute in a way as well. Um, so it's been a long held ambition of mine to have one, but I haven't bought one. Uh, and that's because they're absolutely ridiculously priced. I mean, when you get to a certain sort of price threshold, uh, and this one's definitely above it, then I find it very hard to basically buy. Um, if you look on Bricklink, a complete one of these is £150 for the cheapest, all the way up to £415, which is just ridiculous. Uh, and eBay's a similar sort of range of 165 to 240 at the moment. And that's before postage, before import duty or anything, because they're all spread around the world. Um, and that's also a great degree of different sort of calibre uh, versions of the set in that some are missing stickers entirely. So just really a collection of the pieces and some of them have got stickers hanging off them and all the rest of it. Uh, and it's just it's just impossible to get a good one for a reasonable price. So I can't buy the individual pieces to piece one together like I do some builds uh, using Bricklink because the pieces uh, reflect that value as well. So some of the three long windows and the uh, sticker pieces especially are just a ridiculous price as well. So essentially, it's, it's out of my reach. So 
what I thought I might do is kind of make my own version of a shunter that is inspired very much by that set. Uh, and I could even change the colour of it from the uh, boring old blue. Uh, and maybe even modify my own stickers to kind of match the ones that are in the set. But, you know, with a modern twist and using more modern pieces as well. Uh, and then at least it'll be uh, shiny and new for me at least. <laughs> Now, the other problem that this raised was, where was I going to put this shunter? Because if it's going to be shunting around carriages, then I kind of need a train yard. And although I plan a cargo yard, that's mainly to transfer cargo off the two lines that I've currently got onto road-based vehicles. Uh, so I don't really want a third train line just for this shunter, because really it needs a, quite a network. So what I thought was, after a quick journey on Google and a bit of an explore around what happens in the real life, is actually to add a shunter train to my cargo train. Uh? So what I would do is have my uh, shunter actually on the back of a railway carriage. And this does actually happen in real life, as you can see with these real life pictures of old shunters that have either been transported by a train to end their life, perhaps for deconstruction, or maybe just so they can move them that way a bit more cheaply, because I don't think they travel long distances very well. So what I could have is kind of a heavy load flat car with a depressed center uh, holding one of these shunters. So I've never seen that idea in Lego before, so I thought that actually gets two birds with one stone, or rather three really. One, I get to have a fun shunter. Uh, two, I get to make my cargo train even longer. Uh, and three, I get to have something absolutely unique that no one else has got. So that really uh, floats my boat. So I think I'll go to LDD next, Lego Digital Designer, and uh, go through the next steps of the process with you. Okay, so here we are in Lego Digital Designer, my digital design program of choice. Although if you are starting out, I suggest you go to bricklink.com and download their studio program for free uh, because that is more up to date. But I use this for historical reasons. Uh, anyway, here we are with the diesel shunter locomotive 7760 already in. And it's only got four wheels rather than six, and it's got two wide windows on the front rather than the two three wide windows, but you get the idea. Uh, and the first thing that I looked at uh, when designing this build was the length of it, because if we're going to use a faithful representation of this set, then it needs to fit on my split level train base. Uh, now this piece comes in two slight variations, uh, part number 2972 and 87058 but both are the same real uh, same outline and you can see if we put one in front of this train that it's just too long as it stands with the buffers on both ends uh, conflicting with this split level bit so essentially the very first thing I'm going to have to do is make this a little smaller in length so that's what I did just to see if it was going to work uh, and I've got the train mounted on some of these old single rails just to give it a uh, something to sort of mount onto. Uh, and you can see that I've kept the front in this very, very rough mock-up with sort of seven studs there. And I've taken two studs off the uh, length at the back. So it's very sort of back heavy now, but at least the, um, or back light, uh, at least uh, now the, the buffers on the front and the back actually fit in the confines available. So that's a really good uh, proof of concept, I suppose. Uh, and then this monstrosity, that I've sort of put on is actually a height gauge. Uh, and basically what that means is that if it's up to the height of the green plate or below, that it will fit around my real life uh, track setup in Brick Nottingham. So it will fit through the tunnels, it will fit under the bridges and other obstacles uh, and is all right. Whereas if it's up to uh, the uh, red plate layer or beyond, then it won't fit and it will be smashing into things <laughs> as it goes round. So that's another confine of my particular setup that I have to stick within. Uh, so as a result, I've actually removed this plate layer that was kind of underneath the um, uh, roof section of the original. And I've also changed the roof. So rather than have these individual sort of uh, slope sections with a tile holding them together, I've gone for a single piece uh, roof instead. Uh, now, at this point, I thought, well, I don't have to actually use this shunter. I could actually use a different train. Uh, and one that came to mind was uh, the recent 40th anniversary train set, 40370. And I thought that maybe this, as a similar sort of length train, 
would fit in a similar situation. So I actually had a quick go at putting that on the back of the same sort of setup. And with a couple of variations, again, to the buffers and things, it does actually fit. But then I thought, well, I'm not as fond of that train as I am the shunter. And the shunter is the one I've always wanted. So basically, I thought, nah, I'll go back to this idea, but maybe I'll mix it up in a different way. And the problem with doing the blue one, as we've already established, is that it's crazy, crazy expensive. And that's because a few of the window pieces and the doors and anything with stickers on are really rare uh, and therefore expensive in their own right. So piecing it together just isn't an option. So I thought what I'd do is a really classic and very simple way of redoing an old set, which is basically a recoloration. Uh, and I'd use the opportunity to make changes so I could incorporate more modern pieces as well. But why not use as inspiration all of the amazing amount of train doors that we've had over the years, because they're a part that I'm definitely going to need to incorporate. Uh, and there's been absolutely dozens of different train doors, as you might imagine, for all the trains over the years. Uh, and some of them are only different in the sense that they've got different stickers on. And that wasn't enough for me. I thought I might use something that was even more different, which was some of the two coloured doors or even three coloured doors where they've actually been printed with whole bands of different colour. And I thought that would uh, be a really good way of making my shunter train unique to anyone else's as well. So if we go past the anniversary trains, uh, I kind of mocked up some really quick versions of the sort of standard blue one with different uh, multicolored doors. And you could get a door with red at the top half and blue at the bottom half. And you could get a door with blue at the top half and yellow at the bottom half. So I just thought very quickly I'd color bricks in that combination. And because I couldn't do the door by colored, I sort of did a brick alternative of each so I could kind of pull back and kind of squint my eyes and kind of compare which one I might want to use. And I thought that blue still looks good to be fair. Uh, the red and blue one looks uh, less good, I think. I really quite like the yellow and blue one because it's kind of uh, got those uh, British rail type vibes uh, from the old British rail trains. Um, but there was one that I liked even more that if you saw my last brick haul, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And that was the three colored door uh, from the highway rig set 5580, because that's got a stripe in it as well. So let's go back to real life and have a look at those. All right, back to real life and the building desk. And these are the two doors that I was talking about that I got on my last brick haul. And you can see they've got the lovely big blue stripe on the bottom, then a white thin stripe and a red thin stripe before the rest of the door is white, as you can see. Uh, now they are a bit damaged. They are very scuffed in the blue area. And the red stripe, especially on this one, has faded, I think, because of sun damage. It's almost like a dark red colour rather than a normal red. But I figure that's all right, actually, because this shunter probably would have had a hard life and therefore would have got some damage. And as long as it doesn't look too different to the surrounding bricks that are going to continue these stripes, then I think it will be all right. Uh, because those pictures of real life shunters on the back of other trains were, well, in a very bad state in some cases. So I think that's all right. Uh, and if Railroad Jim approves, then, well, say no more. So, as I said before, they came from the Highway Rig set 5580, and that's a set from 1986, where they were actually the doors to a rather large uh, truck build, uh, and they were the doors there, but there's no reason why we can't change them for trains. Uh, and it is actually, on reflection, a bit similar to the colouring on my subway system, actually, with uh, what one Dutch person has already <laughs> referred to as the Dutch flag, which is true. Uh, <laughs> we'll get into that whole debate about whether it's uh, the Luxembourg flag or the Dutch flag, but nonetheless, it's probably one of each with this colouring. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I think it's, it's going to work really well when we put it on our shunter. So I'm going to move all of those out of the way for now, because we can start with our train base. So as I say, this is 34 studs long, stick studs uh, wide, uh, and I've already put one of the single rails on each side that's going to be actually supporting our train build. So that's very straightforward, so I won't go through all of that. Uh, but we can decorate it, uh, and I thought I'd give it a lot of yellow detailing just to make it a little bit brighter. So on each end, I've got one of the normal sort of train sort of rail type pieces, or railing, uh, that's going to brighten the whole thing up all on its own. It's quite hard to put on when we've got the bogey plates on, but there we go. Just squeeze that on properly on both ends. So that's brightened thinged up. Uh, then I think I'm going to use some of my favourite ladder pieces just on the inside. So uh, civilians, or rather 
employees can get from the sort of top level of the split level to the bottom. I think that adds a bit more brightness and colour. And then I just thought I'd add some random sort of cargo that was kind of left over, just uh, maybe in a bit of a mess from a previous use. And why not add a sort of silvery chain kind of hanging out of a barrel and clipped on to the plate as well. Because that's the sort of, you know, detritus that you'd see hanging around rail yards and all the rest of it. And then that leaves us a great big space in the middle to do our shunter. And I got these on the last haul as well, my favorite one by four tile. I need these for the monorail, but I'm gonna use four here just to brighten up yet further each of these ends with some hazard stripes. So I think that adds a nice bit of color. What do you think of that? I think that's about the right balance. Good, so I can put those to one side and we can start with the train itself. Now, this is going to be based on a 6x16 base, so it can still fit in the middle. And I don't actually have a 6x16 base in black, so I'm actually going to use three 2x16s and kind of join them together with the build. Uh, I might replace them in due course uh, with uh, the proper uh, plate size, but um, I don't think it's going to be too weak. Uh, like this because already it's held together with some bricks for the underside. I always think it's easier to do the underside bit first rather than uh, afterwards. So this isn't going to be powered so this is kind of instead of the motor uh, and the Technic bricks there are just going to hold all of the wheels in place because I do like that sort of three uh, uh, axles worth of wheels on there. So that's just the middle bit. Uh, and then on each end, I actually had a pair of these sort of more old style buffers. So since I've only got one pair of these and they don't match any others in my setup, I thought I'd use them here so they can go on the end. So basically that'll go there in a minute. Uh, so I just need to add some, oop, wrong way, corner uh, plates to fill in some of the gaps. So we'll do that one, two, three, four. And then kind of building upside down, but to hold that in place, we're going to need a six long plate and then a four long plate on top of that, four by two, six by two. Uh, and I do want to incorporate more ladders because we need ladders to get onto this thing. So I've actually got loads of black ladders as part of that last haul. I think I'm going to use four of these. They're all a bit kind of in bad condition as well, actually, from, uh, uh, you know, previous uses. They're a bit faded and a bit chipped and so on. But I figure that'll work rather well in this case, much like the doors are a bit ruined. I figured I'll pick the worst four of these actually for this build and keep probably that one and that one for another build because they're not so bad. And I'm going to put those next on here. So then this little build that we just did kind of holds everything together in place like that. Uh, and then just to hold this kind of end build onto the middle build, I'm going to add some inverted slopes there. So it's really hard to tell when I'm filming this if you can see all of the black on black, but there we go. There is our build on one end and I'll do the same on the other end. So there's lots of ways onto this and I've just done this as one big lump to save on time. So there is our bottom bit. And now it's probably going to be absolutely impossible to put all these wheels on because of these ladders. So I'm going to have to do this uh, probably off build, but <laughs> off screen in a minute. And I'll just throw that one over there. But essentially it's going to look like that on the base. So yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, and then that will go on here. Ah, but look, Robin, you've done it too long. You did all that planning on LDD and it still doesn't fit. Well, if we get rid of these wheels temporarily, the good thing is I can actually remove these magnet setups from this old style of end. So what I'm actually gonna do is just push that through with my fingernail and then hopefully that will pop out. Yep. So let's get that ladder back and then we can put all of that back. Quickly do the same thing on the other side. Am I gonna have to take the end off? Yes, I am. Oh, all that work. Should have done it in the other order really, shouldn't I? Get the ladders in, they need to go in. Okay. So there we go, no magnets on the end. And does it fit? Yes, it does. Cool. So I'm gonna put the wheels on 
uh, because I probably did that in the wrong order as well. And then we can start on the superstructure. All right, looking good. There it is with its three wheels on each side. And they do turn, but I don't think it's really going anywhere uh, when it's on here, where it perfectly fits. Looks really good. It does move that much, I suppose, which might happen when it's going around the track, but not so much that it's going to cause any mischief, I don't think, at all. But yeah, that's already looking pretty good, if you ask me. Uh, right, so we better get on with the superstructure. And the first thing I'm going to do, much like the original, is add some headlights onto the front with a black 1x4 in the middle and the same on the back but with red lights so I'm just using the old style headlight brick uh, and then I thought I'd add a little bit of detail around the sort of sides near the engine front so I'm just going to add some kind of greebling if you will and it's kind of a little cone uh, that I've actually used old grey for the cone and that sort of adds more variety to the sort of dark dank shades and I'm just going to add some one by one round plates as well to the sides. You'll only see one set of these at once, so the fact that they're the same doesn't really matter. Uh, but that represents some of the workings on the side of the train. Uh, and then I need to start building the brick bit. So uh, essentially I've got this as the back section, just kind of a sub-assembly that is matching our colour coding of the doors. So those stripes will go all the way around the vehicle. Uh, and that goes there. So we've kind of got a very small sort of side bit that that ladder leads to from the sides. And I guess this is the ladder that you then swing up to the door, which will be in the next sort of four studs as well. So it'll be kind of like that. Uh, and then we've got a similar build for the front. Uh, and I've started adding a bit more detail with these modified plates as well. And that will go in there. Looking good. Uh, and then we need a little bit more there for in front of the driver. Starting to come together. And then I thought I'd add some more modified bricks. So I've got uh, these in white. Uh, and these were used bricks as well. And they've come, as you can probably tell, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but in all sort of short uh, sorts of kind of slightly faded <laughs> variations of white. And I actually thought I'd go for the darkest two, kind of the worst two, the most sort of stained and aged uh, just to do the uh, bricks at the very back which might be where the exhaust fumes over many many years have been pouring out so I think that works well as well uh, then I can have a white one by four at the back and then I've got a decision to make should I go for a light bluish gray or a dark bluish gray for the grill that's going to be on the front and the back and I think that looks good but the thing is this is all dark bluish gray so I think on balance I might go for something that might stand out a little bit more and just match with the detail of the rails and go for the light bluish grey. But you can see probably now the the discoloration of that compared with that. Uh, and I think that's quite pleasing actually. So it's a good way of, you know, utilising these issues that we have with our bricks. Uh, so then I'm just going to build that to kind of seal the back as well. And I've started using some more modern bricks to sort of make it a bit more interesting than that really old original that was a bit blocky after all. And I can put that brick there. And then I've got a very similar setup for the front with more of these profile bricks. Another one of those light bluish grey grills for the front and another one of the grill pieces on the top there. So that means... It looks like that. And I think now it's really starting to actually look like a train. So there we go. Right, so I don't need that anymore. Uh, then we need to move on to the driver's uh, cabin. Uh, and this is where I'm using these lovely old windows. This is a three piece, which I think is really good at sort of doing an approximation at those old windows that were on the original set. And it's nice that we've got a very sort of central pane uh, and it's a different profile from everything else I've got in my city. Uh, and these, and indeed the one by two uh, versions, are incredibly old. They go all the way back to the sort of 60s and 70s. Uh, and both of these were in loads of different sets, including 354 Police Heliport from 1972. Uh, and you can see that set sold. It's kind of pre minifigures. Uh, and the front door is actually three bricks high <laughs> in the brick height. So, uh, yeah, that's an incredibly old set. Uh, so these I'm going to have uh, the two wide ones 
and they've got a very different connection mechanism now and they sort of slide onto a plate to avoid kind of snapping the little fingers so we'll do that and slide that one on there so this is going to be the two kind of back windscreens if you want uh, with a brick in the middle so I'll put that there and then the front one I'm going to have two one by two plates one on each side and that's just so I can have a bracket piece in the middle with some old school train controls of so the light and the two dials and all the rest of it so that will be facing that way so it's inside the cab so when I put that on there hey hey we're really getting somewhere I love that front window now I think that looks absolutely perfect and the side windows kind of mirror the back yeah that's really good these pieces from that last haul are really coming into their own now so yeah this is looking cute and lovely right so I've got some old really scratched windows as well to go in these doors so that will go in that gap and then this one will go in there and go in that gap and then to hold it all in place because it's probably a bit wobbly at the moment we've got as I said before the big train roof piece and that's going to hold it all together so this might be difficult to do on oh no has it worked oh it worked very easily so there we go and there is a lovely multi-coloured three-striped shunter and I think it's looking rather fantastic wow should we put it on there there we go. <laughs> now you can see, <laughs> you can see why I was really happy starting this video because I was really keen as soon as I had these parts to get this build done because I thought it would be great. And you know what? I think I'm right. Uh, but do tell me what you think or if you've noticed anywhere that I could make some slight improvements to make this even better. But uh, that is great. Just hope I was right with the height calculation and it does fit all around my track. Awesome. Now, Railroad Jim has pointed out a very important point, which was that the original set uh, actually had some quite interesting stickers throughout. Uh, and although I don't really want to spoil my three stripes with stickers along the sides, I could definitely do with some along these sort of black kind of, well, front and back, basically, because they look very, well, featureless, I suppose. Uh, so what I thought I might do is look through all of my sticker collection and look for some with the kind of hazard stripes that you'd see in that sort of area. And there are lots of different sheets that kind of had all sorts of different hazard stripes that I could use. Uh, but then there was one that I thought was even better than any of these. Uh, and it was actually these two stickers down here. Now, ignore the rest of the sheet. This is just an old sticker sheet that I collect stickers that I've kind of peeled off pieces that I've bought using my patented hot tea technique. Uh, and I do that so I can use them uh, in the future. And it's these two stickers here with the kind of hazard chevron type shaped stripes in black and white with some muck all over them that I think are absolutely perfect. Uh, you must agree that they're just obviously going to fit rather well in here. Now, they did come off uh, an eight long uh, tile because uh, they're about six long, well, just longer than the six long sticker uh, on an eight long tile that was part of a power miner set. In fact, the absolutely massive 8964 titanium command rig from 2009, which is an absolutely awesome set uh, that I'd love to have in some respects. But I mean, I don't know how on earth it would fit anywhere. Uh, even in display, it was just ridiculously big. But anyway, that was part of them. And obviously I had two uh, over the years. And uh, yeah, I've, I've kept those stickers for a rainy day. And it looks like it's raining today. Um, so what I thought I'd do is a bit of sticker surgery, really. And use the middle section of each of these uh, stickers. So probably about that much to go on the four long brick that's in the middle between the headlights. And, and then use what I'm chopping off each side, which will be roughly one by one. Uh, to go on the side of each of these lights. And that's exactly the sort of sticker setup that was on the original shunter. Uh, and if it doesn't work, nothing lost. Uh, but if it looks really good, then, well, bonus. So I'm going to get my scissors out, maybe my knife as well, uh, and get chopping. Well, I think Railroad Jim was right with his idea of the stickers, so we should really give him a bedoying, actually. <laughs> Uh, because check this out, I've chopped the middle out, as I said, of those stickers and put them on the front and the back. Uh, and the bits that were left, 
I've managed to put on the side of the headlight bricks, front and back, so these stripes are kind of continued around the corner, all going the right way. I was taught a, a fair few videos ago which way these stripes always go. They go kind of the way that you should go to get out of the way of danger. So that's kind of uh, to the outside and down. So I think that's all right. Uh, and the muck on these stickers really adds to the continued sort of repeated uh, idea of this being a bit old and damaged. So I really like this. It's a really bright, different shape to be seen on my cargo train. And quite frankly, I think I'm really excited about seeing it going around Brick Nottingham. So I think that's what we really have to do next. But yeah, wow, dream achieved. Okay, so here we are in the Lego room and here is our new shunter, or should I say very old shunter actually, on the back of its split level. And I think it just looks really good. Another good splash of colour, a bit of interest on my incredibly long cargo train, which some people are calling Snowpiercer just because of its ridiculous length. Uh, so it's going to be under increasing strain to be pulling all of this now because it really is getting incredibly long indeed as you will see as it all goes by so there's a new one yep still going yep still going yep still going and the pump wagon on the end and it's just as quick to go this way actually to see it coming around again because it's that long so let's give it a bit more welly and maybe a lower angle so the new one coming by now there it is Looking good. I like it. So I think that was quite a clever way of getting a uh, shunter train into my setup uh, without having to get loads more track, which I know a lot of people really want me to do. <laughs> but uh, I kind of figure it's fun trying to fill up as much of the track that I've currently got as possible first. Uh, but yeah, looking good. Right, very happy with that. So, uh, as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. Uh, and next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be doing a brick haul on Wednesday, as usual. Uh, and then on Friday, we'll be back in a fairground doing another fairground build or maybe trying to actually put together some of the ones we've already done uh, into their final positions. But uh, until we get there, I don't know exactly what we will be doing. But uh, I'm sure it'll be fun, whatever we do. So I'll see you then. See you.